In the third and last movie, you learn to rotate the tank's steel wheels by the proper amount, based on the animation of the tread chains. To do that, you will use a mathematical expression that takes into account the master object's travel on the path. The more the dummy travels, the more rotation is applied to the wheel. Select the right front wheel named Wheel 001. Note the local orientation of the wheel. It is meant to rotate on its Z local axis. Alt-right click and choose Freeze Rotation from the Quad menu. This creates a rotation list controller on the selected object. The first controller in that list, an Euler XYZ rotation controller, ensures the object's initial pose or initial rotation is preserved. The second controller, also an Euler XYZ controller, is the one you need to edit. Highlight the Z rotation track. This is the local axis in which the wheel should rotate. Click the Assign Controller button and choose Float Expression. A dialog appears. Before you start fiddling with expressions and variables, let's take a look at a bit of theory. When a vehicle with wheels is moving, the rotation of a wheel is a direct result of two components, the distance traveled and the radius of the wheel. In geometry, the function is as follows. In a circle that is set to rotate, the rotation angle expressed in radians is equal to the arc length divided by the radius of the circle. The arc length, when flattened, represents the distance the circle or wheel is traveling. Therefore, with the scene we have, the rotation of the tank's wheel is based on the distance the master object, dummy 001, is traveling divided by the radius of the wheel. The radius of the wheel is the easiest component to calculate, as it is a constant. The radius of the wheel does not change throughout the animation. This particular wheel is based on tube primitive with a diameter of 50 units, before it was converted to a poly object and modeled into this shape. This makes its radius equal to 25 units. Without this information, you can always use the measure distance or tape tools to get the diameter of the wheel. With that in hand, you are now ready to enter this information in the Expression Controller dialog. In Create Variables, enter the name, Wheel Radius, and click Create. With the newly created variable selected, click on Assign to Constant, and enter the value 25. That's the first piece of the puzzle in place. Next, you need to define the amount of distance traveled by the master object. Since dummy 001 is traveling on a path, its travel distance is calculated based on a percentage of the path lengths traveled. Because of this fact, you need to know the total length of the path. That's another constant you need to establish. Select the path in the viewport. It's probably easiest to do that in wireframe mode. In the Utilities panel, click Measure. The length of the path, or spline, is displayed. It reads 657.236. In the Expression Controller dialog, create a new variable called Path Length. Assign it to a constant and type in the value 657.236. This of course accounts for the total length of the path, but what you really need is a percentage of that. Basically, the distance traveled by dummy 001 is a percentage of that spline length value. Create a new variable named percent. This variable is definitely not a constant, since the path constraint percent along path value of the dummy changes as the animation plays. With the new variable selected, click on Assign Controller. Locate dummy 001 and select its Transform, Position, Path Constraint, Percent, Linear Flow track. 
Click OK when done. With the three variables defined, you are now ready to enter the expression. In the expression window, type in parentheses path length star percent divided by wheel radius. The part in parentheses defines the distance traveled by the dummy at any given time. That value is then divided by the radius of the wheel. Click the Evaluate button. Test the animation. The wheel is spinning backwards. Place a negative sign in front of the expression and evaluate it one more time. This works better. Notice how the rotation eases off as the chain moves slowly. Close the Expression Controller dialog. You can now repeat the procedure on the rear right wheel, or simply use a script line like you have learned in the first movie of this series. In the Max Script Listener, type in dollar wheel 002 dot rotation dot controller equals copy dollar wheel 001 dot rotation dot controller this copies the rotation controller of the first wheel into the second including the expression controller which is identical for both wheels you can even copy the rotation controller from the right side to the left side of the tank However, you'll need to edit the expression so that the wheel rotation is based on the left chain dummy. To do that, select the wheel and go to the motion panel. Expand the rotation controller and double click the Z rotation expression track. In the expression dialog, highlight the percent variable and click assign controller. Rewire the variable to the percent track of dummy 002. Evaluate the expression again and test your animation. Use the script line again to transfer the information from the front left to the rear left wheel. In this three-part tutorial, you learn how to rig tank treads. You also learned how to make wheels rotate properly based on the animation of the chain. We hope you enjoyed the information and we'll see you next time.